Howdy folks, Suffing Controller here, and today we're going to be playing a game called Escape Velocity, which was released back in 1996. It's a Mac-only title, undoubtedly one of the most important Mac games ever made. It is a space combat and trade sim that is reminiscent of games like Elite. Uh, there's another Mac game out there called Galactic Trader, which I think uh, influenced this a little bit. And you'll see very quickly that it was also influenced by asteroids, I would say. Um, it's a very open-ended, um, you know, you can just fly around and do whatever the heck you want sort of a game. But uh, it has a couple of major storylines that you can play through, some smaller plot lines. And uh, it's really one of those games, though, where there's not much stopping you from just cruising around and making a ton of money through trade or piracy or some of the different missions that are available. It's just a very satisfying game to sit down and play. And uh, some of you out there may actually recognize this, this overall title uh, from a previous series. In fact, the first series I actually ever played through on my channel. And that was of Escape Velocity Nova, which is the second sequel to this game. Uh, if you're really interested in seeing an even worse version of me as a... Well, at least as a commentator. I won't say as a player necessarily, but it's probably a worse Let's Play. Go check it out. Um, anyways, I'm going to be playing this game partially, though, as an excuse to show off the computer that I'm playing it on, which is a Macintosh Performa 476, which was manufactured in 1993. I have restored it, recapped it, um, but there's nothing really that I can do that's going to keep this computer from being old and, well, listen, it's got a 25 megahertz processor. Um, you'll notice some slowdowns here and there as we play through. As a matter of fact, this game, or this, this machine shouldn't even be able to play this game uh, because it doesn't have enough RAM. It only has 8 megabytes, which is not enough for this old Mac to, to run all of its system software and this game on top of it. So I'm cheating a little bit and using a utility called RAM Doubler, which I think pretty much everybody who had a Mac back in the day probably ran RAM Doubler, but um, it, it does memory compression. It's not that exciting. But anyways, uh, there's interest in this machine and its inner workings, how I got it up and running. I could do a separate video on that, I guess. But uh, for now, let's get started. Let's create a new pilot named Edit Text or Rick Hardslab. Biff Hard Cheese. Um, you'll notice a few references here and there in this fine game. For now, I'm just gonna just gonna build the brand, man. Gotta build the brand. It's what the algorithm wants. Effing controller. Uh, it said something there about strict play. That's basically hardcore mode. If you die, you're dead. Your pilot's done. You gotta start a new one. We're not gonna be doing that because I fully intend on finding numerous um occasionally humorous ways of dying but i will die a lot in this and um it's just not a good choice to have it be strict play and uh i have to name my rendelli star drive 805r cargo shuttle which i'm gonna call the tater it's a suitable name i think and it's really thinking about all that um all right i think we're ready to go let's uh see what happens here delightful KPT Bryce based loading screen I believe that is the new age of peace and prosperity was a failure discoveries that made faster than light travel possible brought us untold riches and unknown dangers the alien warships appeared without warning and decimated most of the outer colony worlds within hours there was no stopping the mysterious alien menace. The Great War was upon us. But we beat them. The human race banded together into a powerful confederation of worlds whose combined military strength was enough to turn the tide of the war. Within eight years, the enigmatic alien marauders were extinct. The elite and powerful members of the Confederation were reluctant to give up their power after the end of the war and began a rule of oppression and tyranny, aided by the powerful Confederation Navy. 
They exploited the outer colony planets for the benefit of the wealthy core worlds, stripping them of their resources and coercing the colonists into forced labor. This reign of terror lasted for 15 years. Then the insurrection began. The outer colonies, weary of the Confederation's practices of exploiting their land and denying them any representation in the Senate, formed an organized rebellion aimed at destroying their oppressors. In time, their pitiful forces grew, with the help of sympathetic corporations, into a formidable navy. The Galactic Civil War still rages on, and no end is in sight. For a brave and resourceful starship pilot, the stars are filled with untold opportunities and unknown threats. After years of serving as the first mate of an ore freighter, you have finally scraped together enough credits to buy your own ship, a small but sturdy cargo shuttle. You begin your journey orbiting the neutral port of Levo, a backwater world of islands and ocean. The rest of the galaxy awaits you, offering great wealth or a quick death. Your actions will decide which. Good luck, Captain. You're gonna need it. I certainly will. But, uh... I've played this here game a few times. I know some of its tricks, its nuances. Don't even need to read this tutorial text at the bottom, but I actually am going to follow it. It says that I should, uh... land on the planet Levo, but I should also probably, for your benefit, explain what in the hell you are looking at. That uh, blue little marble there, that is the planet Levo. You can see that there's a ship that I've selected there in brackets. That's a, I won't say an enemy ship. For some people, all other ships are enemy ships. But for me, that's just another ship. This, uh, you know, white Chevy Astro van looking thing in the middle of the screen that's floating around in space is our shuttlecraft. It's our sole ship in this crazy mixed up galaxy and you can see that we have some kind of Newtonian physics going on I'm spinning around even though I'm continuing on in this direction this southerly direction there's asteroids in there uh, they don't actually hurt you uh, we'll see what they do later but uh, you can just kind of float around but really the bread and butter of this game is what you do on the planets you're trading you're interacting with the economy and to a certain extent some of the interactions with other captains, some of which are violent in nature, some of which are perfectly congenial. We can go ahead and hail them, for instance. We've hailed this friendly neighborhood scout ship. I'm going to say greetings. And he says, greetings from a fellow trader. Well, I'm convinced that he's doing absolutely nothing suspicious. I'm going to land on the planet Levo. Levo is an independent world that has resisted joining the Confederation. Anyone is welcome at the tiny but neutral Levo spaceport located on the island of Lokanda in Levo's southern ocean. Uh, Levo is a fairly simple port. It only has a few things that we can do here. It has a commodity exchange. Trading can be very, very lucrative in this game, but you have to know where to buy and where to sell. And there's a lot of, there's there are a ton of ports. And I don't remember what's good where, honestly. Um, I, I could try to jot things down. I don't know. But a lot of those resources are sadly gone as far as, you know, like FAQs and such. Um, there used to be a site that had that stuff, but it's, it's, well, I don't think it had that in the first place. I'm thinking of evula.net, but that site is down and I don't think it had a trading guide for this particular game. In any event, um, really when you're starting out, your bread and butter is going to be running missions. And we have just three missions here. Uh, we could do a rush delivery to Samson's planet. Sounds like kind of a hairy situation, but we're going to uh, not do that. Uh, that's a pretty lucrative mission, though. You can see that the pay is 25,000 credits. The other uh, ferry passenger missions are decent enough, but I'm going to hit the bar. And there's nothing. Well, dadgum. Um... You can get some special missions here. They're more interesting. There's some story. There's some flavor. It's uh, kind of the Guy Fieri uh, way of 
getting missions. Uh, you can gamble, too. I'm not betting 5,000. Uh, delightful. And I also caused the slot machine to explode. Um, we can watch Holovid. And this is actually a good way to get some leads on trade. Well, it's a, it's a way. I don't know if I would say it's a good way, but it's a way. Um, brought to you by the Syntex Fuels Corporation. There's a travel update. Earth transport tube from London to Boston closed due to strange odor. No idea. You can also hire an escort. Now get your minds out of the gutter. This is hiring another ship to accompany you. Uh, it can be very useful if you're into trade. And we're not into trade right now. We don't have very much capital. Doesn't seem like a sensible idea. It would be kind of, you know, it's very affordable to hire a shuttle to come with us. This price seems really low, but we also would have to pay a daily fee. So it's it's not really worth it unless you're hauling cargo and making a decent amount of money. So it looks like we're just left with the option of uh, running a mission or two. And that one that was to Samson's Planet, although it is very... Uh, would pay quite a bit. I think I'm going to just take this one to Rupert in the Persephone system. And so we're just going to take some passengers and um, I kind of breeze through the interstellar map, which is being mentioned in the tutorial text below. You hit M, this brings up the galactic map, and you drag it around this world or galaxy, I should say, of escape velocity is quite large. And you plot a course to various star systems to, you know, do your missions or whatever it is that you're up to. Uh, I'm going to plot that course. We obviously can see that this is where we're supposed to end up, but we don't know how to get there. There's a couple of ways that you can figure out how to get there. One of which is to just strike forth into the, the inky darkness of space. Like we have just done. We have just warped into another system. Or you can buy maps from spaceports. It can be a little bit useful to do that. It can save you some time, I guess. But right now, I am not really that interested because I don't have much money. So we're not going to do that. Uh, now we are presented with a literal dilemma. We have two different paths which we may take. I don't remember how to get to this other system. It could be this way. It could be that way. But we're going to try it. Now you'll notice that there are indicators on our right. There's a, a radar display up at the top that kind of it has a planet in uh, one part of it and then there's a little dot that's flying around. That's another ship. The dot in the center is us. Uh, below that there's a shield display and a fuel display. Every time we jump we use up one quarter of our fuel in this particular vessel. There's different fuel amounts for different ships which we'll get into. And um, when I warp into a system, you'll notice that I'm kind of tabbing through all of these different ships. There's a few rebel destroyers in this system here, which is uh, a little bit unnerving, but uh, they're, they're friendly to us. They, they think we're perfectly innocuous. And at this point in time, we are. We are definitely not a threat to them. I am going to land on this planet of Beeblebrox. <laughs> refuel my ship because I'm not exactly sure I think if I go here I can go here and then I think I can go here but I don't remember if this system has a port in it that I can or a, a planet that I can go to and um, refuel so you'll see uh, Beeple Rocks is apparently a wild world ooh baby baby and it's a world of wild parties and wild people it sounds like my kind of place I'm drinking a Good and Gather brand cucumber mint sparkling water. Things are raging pretty hard over here at the Effing Controller house. If you have two heads, three arms, and an ego problem, don't travel to Beeblebrox. You will be laughed at and considered boring and unoriginal. Well, don't I know that feeling. Um, you'll notice that Beeblebrox apparently will buy appetizers for a high price. Appetizers are among the specialty goods that some planets produce and purchase. Um, there is a world out there that produces appetizers at a very low amount that will then be sold, that can then be sold here on Beeblebrox. We'll maybe go into that stuff more as we delve into the trade system. For now, we're going to leave. 
and uh, just move on to our next system here. And I gotta tell you, this cucumber mint good and gather, it sucks. It's not good. It, it, it tastes like a dill pickle, and uh, it's not good. Anyways, <laughs> there's, there's some combat happening. You can hear some explosions and laser blasts and all kinds of stuff. Uh, rebels and confederates will sometimes happen into each other in these systems, and usually a fight breaks out. There are also pirates, and they will try to kill you. They will target you immediately. Fortunately, we've had a rather uneventful trip here to Rupert. And the passengers exit our ship after paying the fee of 10,000 credits. Rupert is a small moon that is home to a colony of religious fanatics, followers of the Order of the Holy Mac. Maybe it's Mac the Knife. We don't know. And in fact, they do have a uh, specialty good that they want. Computers. Um... They also have some low prices on some other stuff. I'm just bearing this in mind for, for later when I maybe will delve into the trade system more. You can see, though, that we've doubled our credit amount, which is great. So we have quite a bit more money. Uh, there's uh, This bar is perplexingly decorated with examples of primitive computer technology, though you can't fathom the reason why. Well, listen, I am playing this on a crappy old Mac, so... I think I understand more than you know. Uh, these rush delivery missions are really the, the single most important way of making money early in the game. Um, the only problem with them is that they take up almost all of your cargo space usually, and so you can't stack missions. Uh, that is also a really important thing. You can see here actually that we have a, a mission to ferry passengers to New Columbia and then a rush delivery to New Columbia. I don't know where New Columbia is necessarily, but I'm gonna take that because passengers actually don't take up space. They just sit on your lap and things get real awkward real quick. But uh, we can't take any more of these delivery missions because we're all out of cargo space. We could take more of these ferry passenger missions. That's out of the way. This, I believe, is out of the way. Well, it's actually further on, but I'm not going to bother with that. I'm going to refuel my ship and uh, hit the road. One, two, three, four. Perfect. And yes, you are probably seeing some random little bits of lag, especially in systems where uh, there's a ton of ships. That tends to happen. This little computer technically should not be able to play this game. It came out in 1993, and then this game uh, came out in 1996. And that, that is kind of, I wouldn't say unfathomable to a modern PC gamer or whatever, that you have a computer that's three years old and it simply cannot play uh, a game released uh, three years after you purchased your computer, but it was kind of a reality, especially for Mac users of the day. Plus, to be honest with you, things were moving pretty rapidly with technology back then, I feel like. Uh, there was a lot of improvement happening. Again, this was a 25 megahertz machine, and then around that time we were getting Pentiums that were well beyond that. Um, Macs were uh, not clock doubled like a lot of PCs, so... Um, the megahertz count was not as important for them, but in any event, uh, that's a boring topic for people not interested in it. Uh, but I, I feel like um, playing this on this, playing this game on this computer, I should say, felt somehow important to me just because because of these unprecedented times. In these, in these exceptional times, as we're so often reminded that they are, um, it just felt like uh, a nice, nostalgic, comfy thing to do. And it's been a great process to restore this old Mac. I've been really enjoying it. It was fairly straightforward. Cosmetically, this thing is not in the best shape, but uh, the, the guts were in great shape overall. So I've been able to get it up and running, and it's been fantastic. I've been playing this game amongst many others, and it's been a lot of fun. 
and they're games that I wish to share with you as well. So, this is just the start, folks. In many ways, both of this series and of effing controller turning over a new leaf, perhaps? We shall see. We shall see. Uh, there's three planets, planetoids, maybe I should say, in the system. There's Tau Ceti 4. Oh, whoops. That's not what I wanted. Um, I want to hail that planet. There's no response. Oh, I can land on this planet. Well, it's, it's, uh... Well, maybe let's do our business over on, uh, New Columbia. Which, if I recall correctly, is inspired by the Pacific Northwest. And so, our shipment of food has been unloaded. And the passenger's exit, that gave us a nice, tidy sum of money. New Columbia's rugged terrain forces its inhabitants to live mostly around the port city of New Seattle. Much of the planet is still unexplored. Yes, indeed. Uh, let's go to the bar. Darn. Uh, see, now this would be great if we had more cargo space. Or this, frankly. But we can't do both of these. So that's too bad. Uh, we could do one of them. Where's Murphy's World? We also want to do that. What I usually ended up doing uh, when I was in my youth playing this game is I would start by picking a, a ferry passenger mission plus a rush mission. Although, uh, if these aren't nearby, then it doesn't really make a ton of sense to do it that way. Let's try this one. Let's go to New France. Okay. I was going to hit the other planets in this system, but that's okay. You know what? Actually, though, we have plenty of time. This shuttlecraft is fairly speedy. Uh, let's land on this planet and just kind of check it out. Tau Ceti 4 was first visited by the colony ship Marathon. Hmm. Doesn't seem relevant. Uh, let's land on the planet Merlin. It's a moon, I would say. More than a planet. It's the largest moon of Tau Ceti 4. Its size is sufficient to hold an atmosphere, and conditions on the on Merlin are quite Earth-like, save for the somewhat lower gravity. The inhabitants of Merlin hold human-powered air races several times a year. It's kind of the uh, the Red Bull Flugtag planet, it sounds like. Anyways. We're going to jump into the next system. Now, we are accumulating quite a bit of money, but we're going to need... A fair bit more before we can really meaningfully up upgrade our ship um, there's all kinds of outfits that we can apply to this ship but they're not really that meaningful this is just a small ship and it's always gonna be a small ship we can't really make it much more than what it is and I guess I have to go down here to get to the next planet or system out some of these ships like to climb the walls their aerial attacks are unstoppable what am I doing let's land on New France there we go and we have unloaded our rush delivery there. Let's refuel a ship. New France was colonized during the Great Expansion as a center of culture, learning, and enlightenment. Now it has the highest number of gift shops and burger bars per capita of any known planet. Sort of a cynical statement about tourism, I guess. Anyways, uh, Luna would be a nice place to visit. One thing you can do is just kind of scan through these. Sometimes you'll get missions that are 10, 10 tons to 10 tons to transport. And you can take two of them. So I'm just going to do two of these. I'm going to take uh, this cargo delivery to New Ireland and this transport cargo to Ontario Station. And they're not rush deliveries. They're not super remunerative. But that's okay. We're exploring the galaxy a little bit. And that's um, it's important for us to know where things are. been well i hate to jinx it 
Yeah, we've been really fortunate with the, the piracy and the violence <laughs> that may be directed our way. Uh, we haven't had any issues, really. Okay, so we're in the Pollux system. Uh, let's jump down there. Now, one thing that you should do... Um, there's a couple things you should do. When you warp into a system, you should typically try to scan through and see what is there. Because if you just warp in and warp out, you're actually kind of vulnerable in that period of time when you're warping out. And if there's a pirate and he makes a beeline for you, the process of warping out, you're, you can't do anything with your ship. You can't cancel the warp. You're stuck. And so that pirate can just blow you up without you being able to fight back or anything or maneuver or anything like that. So it's a good idea to just kind of tab through, see what's going on. And the other reason you want to do that is occasionally that there are ships that are named like this, like the SS Carter here. And this guy doesn't have anything interesting to say, but oftentimes if you hail them, they will tell you things that are of use. He's just saying, yep, I'm just a normal trader with nothing interesting to say. So I'm sometimes not great about remembering that uh, adage there of tabbing through, but when have I ever been great at anything? Now, uh, this isn't great. Uh, and I don't know why I did what I did. Because I could have just gone up there. We're going to go back to Pollux. Um, one advantage of the, the shuttlecraft is that it only takes one day to warp between systems. That's very important, especially later on, when you're trying to trade and you're accruing escort fees because they pay by the day so it can get pretty expensive if you are like in between planets for like three or four days you're paying a lot of money new japan is a peaceful island world and a well-established colony okay i did not get a chance to show you the outfit ship screen this is actually a pretty extensive planet as far as upgrades but you can see there's all these different things we can add on to our ship uh, this would be of some use but we don't have the mass on our ship to be able to accommodate this we could buy laser cannons proton cannons might be kind of fun to try piracy in this piece of junk but probably not going to work out too well uh, this is sort of a useful upgrade but really i'm not going to use this ship too much what i'm aiming for is this ship the courier we're getting there. We are halfway there. I've been yammering quite a bit. Um, but this is what I want to upgrade to. It has uh, 50 tons of cargo space, which is more than double what we've got now. And it has fuel for eight jumps. It has uh, a turret installed, which I would actually get rid of. There's no reason to have it if you're not going to do combat, which I would hesitate to do in this type of ship. But it's a, it's a good ship. It's a really solid upgrade. This is a solid upgrade, too, and we can buy it right now, but it's just not as good as the, the Courier, in my opinion. When I was playing as a kid, I used to upgrade to this all the time. But I think that the, the cargo difference, it's 40 tons as opposed to 50. Um, that, that's still important. That's, a, that's enough to warrant saving up for the Courier. Um, the Courier is also slightly... Well, I was going to say it's slightly more robust... It has a little bit more armor. Its shields are worse than the scout ships, but um, you can upgrade your armor, I guess, a little bit more easily than you can upgrade the shields, which I guess is a point in the... Yeah, that's a point in the scout ship's favor. Tell you what, I'm just arbitrarily deciding that I want a courier. How about that? It does have more space, and if you're interested in pursuing trade, uh, that's obviously the most important factor, but... It just gives you that much more space for missions. And that, that's why it's good. Okay, we're going to land here on New Providence. You can see that there's a bulk freighter. It freights bulk. Or is that where I'm actually supposed to drop off my cargo? These are both uh, bulk freighters. They're extremely slow. Um, Antares Station is actually where I'm going, so let's go to Antares Station. And they turn really slowly. That's not just the computer being slow there, that's how slow they turn. They're not good in that respect. 
we don't have a lot of space, unfortunately. We could ferry passengers to port. I guess that's Port Oriad. I don't know. It's kind of an interesting reference. I think that they're a type of Greek three four. I think that we can get there like that. Um, like a. I don't know what they are. They're Greek. <laughs> they're like a dryad, right? Anybody out there know? Any Greek mythologists out there? Well, who cares? Um, we're going to go this way. Have another sip of my dill pickle soda. hail this guy yeah there you go captain of the ss lysander appears on the view screen greetings captain he says i have some passengers aboard that need to get to sergil 3 but i have another delivery to make first and i need someone else to take them there are you interested sure great i'll have them sent over in a shuttle pod when you get to sergil 3 they'll give you your payment will they though i don't know sergil 3 is all the way over there so they're gonna be tagging along with us for a while um oh well They'll just have to figure it out. Get comfy. Ah, oh, rats. So, go this way or that way. I think this way is correct. Now, we're in the Altair system. It says no stellar objects present, which means no planets. I guess a star is a stellar object, right? Presumably, this is a star system of some kind. It just has nowhere that we can land. So, we're moving on. Polaris system to the aptly named North Star. Refuel the ship. The nighttime sky of North Star is truly a sight to behold. The luminescent rings that circle the planet carve a glimmering arc across the sky each night, providing a spectacular show for natives and visitors alike. Um, I'm hesitant to go to the bar because I don't really have any cargo space. Somebody has an interesting mission for me, so I'm just going to get out of here of course I could have gambled could have hired an escort and mitigated that whole issue and really I think that that might not be an awful idea oh we're being targeted by a pirate argosy which is may, you may not be able to tell based on how this is being rendered but it's the dot that is immediately well it's Kind of to our uh, 10 o'clock. It's flashing every now and then. So, we're just kind of juke them a little bit. We have a delivery to New Ireland. There's three different little planetoids here. This is New Ireland here. So, we're going to land here. There we go. Okay, let's see if we can find a rush delivery that takes us a little bit closer to where those passengers are from, Sergil. That's really close, so let's bear that in mind. Tabletop. Everybody's favorite type of gaming. Tabletop. Uh, you know, you can't really argue with that one. That's a really, really close mission to do. Suppose you could just gobble up a bunch of ferry passenger missions and just as you go through the galaxy you'll every now and then have a planet where you can drop people off. Suppose that's a way of doing things. Seems kind of annoying though and I think you might have a maximum number of missions you can take which I don't know if I run into or not but that stands to reason. Uh, Ah, this is an interesting star system we're in. Is it the one I'm thinking it is? Yeah, Blackthorn. There's a space station here that is a little bit seedy, but we're going to move on out of here. We'll be back. Don't worry about it. Double back here. 
rebels and confederates are fighting. Oh! This is one of the best uh, ships in the game. It's called a Kestrel, but it's piloted by somebody named Skipjack. Oh, I thought that he was fighting someone. Let me hail, hail this guy, see what he's got to say. We bounty hunters make our living destroying pirates for whoever will pay us. Okay, well, duly noted. Uh, interesting name for a bounty hunter. It's a type of tuna, but anyway. <laughs> we just made quite a bit of money. I'm going to grab a couple. Hunter is home to the famous Orion Trouser Snake. Excuse me. Um, I want to grab a couple missions if I can. Master's Planet is over here. I know vaguely where it is. Uh, let's do that one. What I'd like to do is get enough Let's hail this guy. Okay, never mind. Get enough money so that we can buy a courier and end, end the video there. So you're stuck with me for another few minutes. Too bad. I don't know why I bring up the map. There's no real need to do that. Although would have actually been good in that other situation where I was like, why did I warp into that other system? Uh, there's several pirates here, and one of them is a Corvette, which is dangerous because the man piloting it is having a midlife crisis, and he'll do anything to kill us. But they're fast, and you can see that they fire tracking missiles. Now... We have the great fortune to be in this particular system, and those missiles will hit most of these asteroids, so we're going to be pretty much safe. But had this been a system that was less asteroidy, we would have been in some trouble. And we better boogie. Okay, good. I heard that other that additional mission, additional missile launch. It's hard to say. And I uh, thought for sure that he was going to hit us with one. I'm going to land here. And I'm, I'm debating. Don't mind me. Pegasus is a small mining and research colony on a moon orbiting Perseus 2. The Reckoning. Let's just get to our next uh, mission point before I call it an episode. Excellent. Just one more warp and we're good. It's funny because I can vaguely remember bits and pieces of the galactic map as we move through. Like I remember this area has if you oh wait i'm thinking of a different area i thought that this linked up with this and then that linked up with that i'm apparently wrong well dad doesn't know where he's going it's fine i don't need a map all right cool so we still have passengers that we need to uh offload over here in sergil 3 um, I want to get a new ship, but we're going to save that for the next episode. I'll see you guys then.